The Court of Public Opinion is a part of the Amateur Radio Network. Welcome to an episode of the Court of Public Opinion. We're going to be talking about um, the release of sex offenders uh, under Jessica's law and Megan's law. They're required by law to register uh, as a sex offender. And I'm going to show you the photos of those individuals and we're going to uh, discuss it in, we've been discussing the Tara Reid story and also some other stories that whenever, whenever there's an actual conviction, which that's where this whole story with Tara Reid is left off, is there wasn't an actual conviction or a prosecution, and that's basically what Megan Kelly was saying is that there wasn't an actual prosecution. So, um, they would, uh, typically, if there's other victims that come out, then there would, it would lead to a prosecution. Um, now the whole, the story with, uh, Barack Obama coming out about the Michael Flynn, um, again, there's, uh, procedural stuff and, preliminary stuff that they go through. Um, so I am not sure about that story, but I just am talking about procedural stuff. I want to talk about the Orange County release of sex offenders because at the same time this is going on in California, there's gun control. And the purpose behind having a gun is to protect us victims from sex offenders. So when they start trying to take gun rights away from victims, there's a big, complex, complicated story here that is going to be resolved. And by the time we uh, get to that point, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a break here in a moment, and we're going to resume here in just give me a few minutes. Okay, you're listening to the Court of Public Opinion. I brought it back. Um, because I think that his show is important and what we're going to be talking about is saving the Constitution. Um, I want you to order this book if you're going to follow our posts on these topics. If you don't, that's fine too. Um, I recommend it. Um, what we're talking about is the Second Amendment and when they release uh, criminals from prison, uh, especially criminals that are sex offenders, that are a danger, a danger. Um, we're also going to talk about something personal to me. Um, and I just want to make sure, because I got a bookmark here, about the topic. We're going to talk about vested rights. And we're going to talk about some other things. We're going to pick apart some things in this book. That's why I want you to get the book so that we can refer to it and highlight on some things. Why I want to go into this topic about uh, vested right, legal definition of vested right, I want to make sure you read that. It says legal definition, a right belonging completely and unconditionally to a person as a property interest which cannot be impaired or taken away as though retroactive legislation without the consent of the owner. I'm going to leave it right there. We'll be right back after this. Okay. So we were talking about this book as a reference because um, in the Court of Public Opinion, we want to go based on the Constitution. And there's been uh, different areas of the United States where they're pushing gun control, like in Michigan, here in Pennsylvania. Also in California, those are just the three that I can think of right now. So um, having this book, it's by Richard Proctor, PhD, and it was uh, as seen on uh, the Hagman Report. And this is like an assignment for some of us. So I want to go back to what I was telling you guys about the vested right. That you have a right to those property items, those, those those things that you purchase, like your house, your car, 
Uh, no one can just take your stuff from you. It's called a vested right. And what happened to me is that they tried to take, they, they took my gun rights away from me. This is after I had already had a rape kit done. And I've already been a rape survivor and a domestic violence survivor. In fact, at the same time they were doing this, I had three cases open in Pennsylvania. So, um, and then they turn around and take my car. And there were people tampering with my battery in my Volkswagen Jetta. Also, there were people doing the same thing to my 626 Mazda, I'm sorry, Mazda 626 in South Carolina. So this is after getting a rape kit. This is constitutional issues that are at hand because I didn't get to go to court. And what happened was I had the rape kit done and this was in April 19th, 1999. And they did not proceed with the case. Except for after that whole process, other things started to happen. So a lot of times what Tara Reed was talking about is retaliation. Like as soon as she started coming out with her story, she started receiving threatening phone calls, threatening, et cetera, et cetera. And that's why we call it a constitutional matter now. Because um, there are laws, it's a, it's a good Samaritan law to report a crime. Let me give you an example. Um, I was at Dollar General right up the street from where I live here in Butler, Pennsylvania. And a little boy was thrown in a grocery cart. And I was just telling a new friend of mine about what it was like to watch and witness this three-year-old being thrown around in a grocery cart. So I reported it to the manager. I heard nothing else after that. And, like, to me, when we get into this, like, where I want to leave off again, because we're not going to probably get into a whole lot of, uh, of things, um, but it'll say Article 1, Section 9, Paragraph 5, Page 76. No tax and duty should be laid art, uh, on articles extort, exported from any state. And then it goes into saying this paragraph ensures the states that could could not have tariffs on goods between states so the goods can move th freely. That's more interstate. But, um, why it's invested, right? I wanted to make sure I didn't lose my spot there. But, this is all through it and it's the legislative branch let me just read article one article one section one all legislative powers therein granted shall be vested in a congress of the united states which shall consist of the senate and the house of representatives so this is all property that belongs to the citizens of the United States. The first sentence of the Constitution defies that who who makes laws in this country. It says the legislative body is the only body that can make laws. It doesn't say when the mood where the when the mood takes them. The president or the Supreme Court could make the laws. It doesn't say if the president wants he can write an executive order that will be treated as a law. These are things that I think are going to be helpful to some of us. And then it gets also talks about maritime jurisdiction and some other things. Um, so leaving off with where we were talking about vested rights. A right belonging completely and unconditionally to a person as a property interest which cannot be impaired or taken away. My truck was towed on a mechanic's lien. So whenever I read that, I realized that it's unconstitutional to take my vehicle away from me. Um, now, when I was talking to law enforcement, I was talking to this police officer on the side of the road. I had my hazards on, I ran out of gas. It's all 
that really was wrong. Now, there was a concern that there was possibly a gas line issue, and I talked to the mechanic, and he was coming to take the vehicle, He, the mechanic. And he had been working on my car at that point. And that's all, it, it was that simple. But where it got convoluted is that the tow truck company said that I had done damages to this vehicle yet didn't report it to my insurance company. So when I read that vested right, that was right up my alley. And a lot of us have issues with the Second Amendment being removed from us. That's that's in the Constitution. So they're in the constitutional battle right now. Those who are gun control who are making references to uh, shootings and guns. Um, this is for everyone. This Constitution is for every American who is born and raised in the United States. You know, your natural rights. Rights that were given to you by God. So I'm going to leave the blog off at that. I think it was important that I got online again and do the webcast. Um, I normally would have done the blog, but uh, I think it's important that we stay with what we've been doing. Recording Public Opinion is a part of the Amateur Radio Network.